Yeah, yeah. The Right Honorable Joe Senyoni Bisekes. Let us welcome the Chief Opposition Whip. Mic check one, two. Uh, the Right Honorable Leader of our Parliamentary Front, uh, Honorable Members of Parliament, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, allow me also add my voice to send heartfelt condolences to friends, families, and comrades of Sarah Eperu, and I continue to pray that the Almighty rests a gentle soul in eternal peace. It is an honor today for me to share my thoughts with you this morning as we launch uh, our alternative budget policies for the new financial year. The theme for today is a reflection of our vision for a new Uganda, a Uganda whose resources are exploited for the benefit of the citizens and not for the benefit of a select few individuals. A Uganda that protects and, prote and promotes dignity and basic freedoms and rights for every citizen. A Uganda that puts interests of the people, the citizens, at the forefront of public policy. The alternative budget priorities presented today recognize the plight of the ordinary Ugandan whom the leaders derive their mandate from, and also paint a clear picture of what we intend to do in order to make Uganda a country that works for every Ugandan. Ladies and gentlemen, Ugandans deserve better health care, they deserve better education, and they deserve better infrastructure in order for them to live their full potential and benefit and enjoy all their fundamental rights. Because education is essential for producing skilled workers, a workforce that will transform communities, it's therefore important that our children study subjects and courses that are relevant to their passion and natural abilities. We cannot achieve without changing, we can't achieve this without changing or in fact overhauling our entire education system and realigning our education institutions. Considering that 75% of Uganda's disease burden is preventable, then we must make our priority to invest in disease prevention rather than disease cure. This should be done in addition to hiring skilled and professional health workers through a fair recruitment process and go ahead to remunerate them fairly and on time. We must think about our creative area, think about our creatives, provide conditions that don't only protect their intellectual property, but also create conditions that help them to live to their full potential. About the creatives that could go on and on and on, but the rest, I guess, Dr. Hilderman and uh, others 
who are creatives and within our leadership will elucidate on that. However, ladies and gentlemen, as attractive as all these alternative policies might be, it is actually impossible to achieve them if the leaders in charge of our national resources cannot rise above their petty selfishness. We must resist, we must reject, in fact, we must eject all forms of corruption in public administration. Otherwise, all this will be going to a waste. Our sources will continue sinking down the long drain of personal greed at the expense of our collective well-being and at the lives of our people, our children, and our children's children. As a national unity platform, we shall continue to take decisive action in that regard. Friends, many good proposals have been presented in terms of policy alternatives, in terms of laws, by ourselves and other leaders. But let us be honest, no matter how good our thoughts are, no matter how beautiful our proposals are, they shall never see the light of the day for as long as dictator Museveni is still in charge of this country. That is my firm belief. Yes, we must continue telling Ugandans the truth as it is instead of, you know, misleading them with eloquent speeches. We must paint to them a picture of the problem and indeed go ahead and point at where the problem is. The man who has ruled our country for almost 40 years now is not just a political opponent to us, no? He is the embodiment of Uganda's problems. He's a living testament of corruption. He's the testament of oppression. He is the embodiment of the abuse of all democratic principles. In a nutshell, he is the roadblock, he is the stumbling block between Uganda and its progress. So let us face the reality and deal with the reality as it is. It's until you diagnose the problem that you'll be able to deal with that problem. I mean, he and his cronies live in extreme luxury while our hospitals are sick and our schools are rotting away. Yes, we have alternative policies. Yes, we have brilliant minds here in parliament, you know, wonderful at economics, wonderful at debating and all that. But we shall debate, we shall propose, and we shall articulate issues. But let me be clear to you once again, my brothers and sisters, that no matter how good our alternatives are, no matter how well-intentioned you, our MPs, are, it won't make any difference for as long as we don't have any power to implement those good ideas. We must get used to that fact and deal with that fact exactly the way it is. I mean, we can draft the most comprehensive budgets, we can allocate funds meticulously, we can strategize endlessly, but as long as Museveni remains at the helm, the efforts will all be like rearranging cups on a falling table. We must channel all our energy. We must channel all our passion and all our abilities and all our determination towards one singular mission, removing the dictator and reorganizing the country as the citizens of Uganda. That is the only way this is going to be possible. So I continue to encourage all of us here present and those watching us outside that we must do what we must do. You cannot take a step unless you unlock your feet. So for now, what we have as a great resource is our collective determination and collective will to have a free country and after having that, then we shall go ahead to build a Uganda where all Ugandans are equal regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of where they come from, regardless of religion, tribe, or social class. 
we shall go ahead to build a Uganda where leaders lead with integrity, where leaders are true servants and citizens are the true masters of their destiny. So let us use this resource that we have to put an end to this dictatorship. Let us use this resource to change this country once and for all. I thank you for listening to me, for God and my country. Thank you, Mr. President, for that very elaborate speech. We also thank the Leader of Opposition for his speech to us all. We believe we have taken in what we have been told. Now, allow me, Honorable Members, to invite... We are in Yuxoka, Nebaziza, Leader of the Party of the Parliament, right, Honorable Joe, Senior Nineti, Mionaja Kozenayo, who full me a budget here for no. Etali ya etali nene nyo na ya tenge focusing a kubintu ebi yamba bantu gegobe ya normala mwa ogu stula edem edembe ya bantu edembe ya bantu sikuwe ya galabu ya gazi na ino ku enjoy ngobo kunyumirwa ngobo kwe ya galira mbintu evyo bivasa nilu kwe ya galira mwa mateka ni okusingira dalo baka wange wakati mkubeba za uro kufayo ni budget ya nenunji nebi roo zebiru unji mba juki zaba kulembe zeba fe nti ebi roo zebiru unji to Jana Bio, Biba Denga Biretewa, Nae Chizibu Chetuina, Tebirozo, Bikoma Kuretewa, a Chizibu H. Singe Cha Uganda, Yenache Marida Yoveri Museveni, Nga Ye, Sente Zeguanga Zonazona, Azimarida Mukwe, Kumidam Buinza, Kuguri Raba Kurembezeva Motoro De, Nakuni Girizabantu. So a Chizibu Chetunok Soko Kujao, Yenache Marida Museveni, then to Berene Dembe, Ezisa Sanya Sente Za Uganda. Si mkwe jarabia na imu kutere zebio, ebi sanu kutasa abantu, ngama somero, ngama lwa liru, nebi laifana na webi. Well, saga la nsonge no nene jiri du singa kumutu omu, uh, nsonga jemba desikonye kwe nsonga yenguzi, ekute ejembe. Ni wangu bade omu kufe na iya sanga monsonge yu, na ye abamu kulira ebi basingo kulia nguzi, okugeza speaker wa fe wano, speaker wa parliament ya Uganda, ye nachi nku mkulia nguzi. Ere cho cheta go kuogeru wako, nsi na ichimanya, nsi ne mkolinga autu. Kupanga sente, zono nebuwa pari ya mentie, nesobolo kuchusobola mbu haba antu bonji nyo. So, obolibu enguzi ye kansa, ayono nye Uganda, kati chafuka institutiono. Enguzi ya fuka angeli ya kwe kumida mbu inza, na angeli ya kukakanya bafuganya government. So, enguzi nge kulemberu anita mongo, speaker wawano, no munga mulimu, sibo kabo kaba enarimu, na inga mulimu na haba fe, Chizibu nyo era na chotu ino chiru wanyisa, ate tuja chiru wanyisa. Fenga NUP, tuja kukola, kukoze sebi kolo wa sebi gambo. Wetu ino buinza wona ukuru wanyisa nguzi, na etu wagala, na buli chitongo licha government, chikoso buinza obo ukuru wanyisa nguzi, kuwe nguzi ya sisigiza Uganda mabiga. Ensonga yobu talo talo, mwe ba nama ulire, mwe abajite kao. Tewali rutalo rona rona. Ukule kango ngamanti, ukule chitufu, luba rutalo. Ukule chitufu, luba rutalo, then tulimu rutalo. Ere tu ino kubera mu lutalo ngatulwa nyise nguzi ngatulwa nyiso buli yake ngatulwa nyiso bwana che malira do luba lutalo so si mu kibina cha fe nze ndo uza mu kibina cha fe twandi badenga echo kulabirako buli muntu kaberenga speaker wa parliament ya gude ya kute ya leader nguzi kaberenga minister na akangavulwa ngabe chino kubera fenga NUP tuba wa cha kulabirako tuli option Era mu Uganda mpya bwetu bikola bwetu job bikola nga tumazo kugoba na chema lira sagala nyo kukendeza kuogera kwange ku uh, kukukakanya ate kusa kuba memba bange benkulembera mu kibina njagala nyo njogere ku nsonga ezigasa egwanga lyonna kati budget eno si ya NUP yoka wabula e reflecting a financial opposition yonna so sagala Ensonga za NUP ya tenzi ingi zembibine bidara. Jaga na njogele kuchintu. Echigasa egwanga lionario na si chibina choka nga NUP. Webali nyo webali nyo. Chana kunyo okubeda monsi nga tulo oza. Nti buwaba obu menyi buwa mateka o ina kutesa na menya mateka. Buwaba obu menyi buwa mateka. Nga wali wo evidence. Obu ya obu. Obu julizi. Obu mudu mika. Deni amateka gakore. Bumunga amanti te, te amam, omutu wabame nye teka, batesaganye na ye, 
then tujewa mateka bibelebi ya kutesa ganya. Baganda bafe abasi wa makomeda tebaina musango. Noluwe nsongeyo baina okuyimburwa embagirao awatari kwa kulizo kubati baina musango. Bababa baina musango baletewe mkoti bavunaniwe umusango gubake muvi obaba gusinge. Bejerele. So si kutesa ganyana bo. Iye nkola ya chiekera. Tetu kilis ganyana yo. Tu kilis ganyana mufuga. Ea mateka. Elabwe tunatuwa lubu inza. Ye mfuga jetujo kutambuli. It is unfortunate that we live in a country where the leadership thinks or the rulership thinks that when somebody commits a crime, you have to negotiate their release. If somebody commits a crime, then let the evidence be presented. Let them be presented in a competent court and let them be either convicted or acquitted. We are not going to negotiate our rights. We believe in the rule of law. If there is the rule of law in Uganda, let it work. If the courts function in Uganda, let them work. Our brothers and sisters who are in prison for the longest time, the political prisoners, are innocent, and we continue to demand their unconditional release. We are not going to negotiate because if you ask us to negotiate, what do you want to us to give in exchange for our freedom? Bobo ya gala tute isaganye no muntu, nga kuteba ganda bafe, nga teba inamu sangu. O ya gala fetu muwechi, atuweba ganda bafe. Kubanga chibamba sibira, dembe ya abu. Ate dembe ya abu edyo, sibe tegefu diwa ayo. Nebiba na atebwa, baja kusigalanga baya enile dembe ya abu. So siri ya kute sako, na ye, ya abu eba ange kuba constitution ili garanting. Well, everything we do, we do it in the open. We are a transparent political party. And what happened was in public. The information came from the public domain, and we dealt with it as our morality levels permit. The speaker is a criminal herself. The speaker is a criminal, so we don't really have time to exchange with criminals. Thank you very much. The so-called internal conflicts are a creation of the media. As you have seen, so many TVs have been on, 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 out you know, on rampage trying to create a non-existent uh, impression that we have conflicts. No, they are not conflicts. The only conflict we have is with criminality, is with corruption, and we deal with corruption uh, as people that know that corruption is a cancer that has bedeviled our country. Thank you very Maybe much. Maybe last thing. Well, we major on majors and minor on minors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. First of all, I'm so sorry. I must apologize. You see, we senior citizens. We have so much, and forgetfulness is part of it. <laughs> so I remember Friday, a lady rang me over Thursday or something and said, we want you. I said, hey, what is it? Budget? Oh, okay. I'll see. Now, since morning, uh, that was off the head. And then around 11, he said, where are you? I said, my goodness. Who are you? He told me. He said, when are you finishing? said two o'clock. I said, okay, let me at least appear. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I came late and so I have not had this whole thing. Uh, but I want to say that I was very happy to have been invited to, to, to come here to, to listen to what you are saying. You know, many people, me, whichever party, whoever calls me, I go, I'm a senior citizen and I'm a Ugandan. It does not matter where or what, I'm a Ugandan as a senior citizen, I'm interested in Uganda as a nation and Ugandan people. So when Inup calls me, I, I come and I'm very happy to be there. I wish I was here to listen to everything and then say, oh, so this is the alternative view. I want to thank you so much to ensure that you really offer your alternative view because what is democracy? This liberal democracy, which we say we are following, is that there is this government to serve the nation, and there is the opposition to give alternative view and to be watching oversight and see next year or the other year, they may be now the government while the other one is in opposition. So opposition and government are supposed to work together all driven by service to their nation and to their people whom they serve. So for me, I, I love now what you are doing, that the budget statement was, you know, was given, I think, and then you are saying for us, 
If it were we, this is how we would go about it. And one of the reasons why I'm so happy about this is that it it dis it is it what it disputes eh? these all these general Ugandans who say this opposition it has no program it has no plan it, it that's how they talk about opposition and usually I say but look here. Do you think a group of people can sit there and say we want to lead this nation without this manifesto? And I'm sure every, every party has a manifesto, but because people don't read them, they think that when you come up to lead, you have nothing to offer, just because we generally don't read. And I'm even wondering how many are even listening to the alternative budget. But for me, what I want to tell you is, as a leader who was a leader, elected leader, but who continues to be a leader because leadership does not end, and leadership is about service, and it does not depend on any position you hold, but it depends on the passion you have for your vision for the people you are leading. So whether 19 years ago, I have no position which I hold, but I'm still a leader in this country. And so I'm so happy that you give this and people read and hear that if it were you, you would have done this kind of thing. So I want to congratulate you that you, you move on. Whether you are discredited, whether you are bashed, I remember is it Martin Luther King or Junior who said that if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but at least continue moving. In other words, whether they discredit, whether they rubbish, whether continue moving, one day your movement will be real. Didn't you see Barack Obama? Amazing and incredibly being the, the president of America because they continued running. So walking or crawling. So that's what I would wish to you. Now, having said that, you said I was one of those ministers. By the way, I was the first minister for ethics and integrity. 19... <laughs> I was appointed in 1998, but because of my integrity, in the environment which does not want integrity, I didn't stay long. It was, I didn't finish even five years. Because I stood my integrity, I was thrown out, and thrown out completely up to now, 19. <laughs> because of my integrity. And whatever they try to say, Kaka, I say, my integrity does not allow this. And so, when you say, you are fighting corruption is your priority, I say, well, that's good. But as I stand here, I stand here as a senior citizen, as a Ugandan, and I stand here to tell you, you how many, I don't know how many parliamentarians are here, that for us outside there as Ugandans, we look at you as the same. We look at parliament and see those terrible people they are robbing us, they are robbing us. So my challenge which I throw to you is that each of you who is there is to distinctively stand tall, distinctively stand tall and show that for you, indeed, you are opposing these corruptions, these unethical conducts, these what? Stand there distinctively showing that what drives you into that parliament is service, service to your people. Stand out distinctively like that and give this alternative budget, whether it is being implemented, whether it is taken up for you, you get guided and you follow the principles that you have put here so that everybody can say, yeah, whether they bash them or what, at least there are a few Ugandans who are standing distinctively for us. And because of them, we shall overcome. 
That is what I want to tell you on behalf of Ugandans. Because we really feel these people whom we chose to serve us are not driven by service. That at the center of, your, of, your, of what I call leadership, rather than being people-centered, is self-centered. Rather than being service-oriented, it becomes power-oriented. In other words, you find that, yes, you are in this leadership, but you are driven by self-centeredness and power-orientedness. And yet, a leader should be driven by people should be people-centered and service-oriented. I'm so glad that I'm in a, um, I've been, I stood here as a senior citizen to tell you that kind of thing, so that you get to know that for sure, for sure, where our country has reached, it needs liberation. It needs redemption. And for us, where we are, our eyes are on God, of course, but God does not come here and work we believe that that God can work through you and bring things to, to a better way. And so I want to thank you and I want to encourage you and, and stay tough. Have you, have you ever seen me ever shaken by anybody? Eh? 19 years. I worked for 30 years, good 30 years for this country. But when I said no, you can't remove the term limit. I was thrown like in the garbage. No pension, no gratuity, no not, nothing. I don't tell you to choose those people, but I tell you how people can rob you. Me, I was robbed. But because I stand with my God who created me, have you seen me lacking? Have you seen me? I don't have mansions. I don't have the, those will remain here. But I work, continue to serve for a legacy. That when I'm long gone, it is not the pension, it is not the what, eh? that they will remember about me. And I can assure you, it gives you joy, it gives you peace, it gives you, and so now that you've, you've enabled me to stand here, I want to affirm you that when you stand with what is right, with what is good for the people of God, because God puts in a position, the Bible says that King David knew that God had appointed, appointed him a leader in Israel for the sake of his people, Israelites. Now, if you take it that God granted you this position of leadership for the sake of Ugandan people, and you stand with that, he will stand with you, and you will stand tall, and he will keep you, and one day he will use you to deliver this nation. Now, as I go to sit, I don't know whether you talked about this issue of taxes for Ugandans. You people, Ugandans are dying. Ugandans are suffering. I have a personal experience. I had my Katsumoro house, which has been giving me whatever you try eat, and so on and so forth. But this is a house, an old one, which is no longer new. People go in the new ones. So I get small tax from it. But I tell you, revenue authority takes almost the, uh, uh, half of it. The same rent is being taxed by revenue authority and the city council. Double taxation. I went and appealed everywhere. They told me that it is you, parliament, who passed a law that resulted into that double taxation. That's what they told me. I went to Revenue Authority. I went to City Council. Imagine to the judge. I appealed on behalf of Ugandans. I said, if they can torture me, what about these market women, these small rentals which people have? People are dying out there, you members of parliament. So this tax of yours now, which has increased, and it is aggressively, aggressively collected from people whom you are not giving anything to raise it. Please be humane. Ugandans are doing what? 
are perishing. Me, that's what I leave to you. The tax, the tax, the tax, please. Deal with it. Otherwise, people can care for themselves. You are not helping them. But if they have their carento, if they have... Don't take it without giving them anything, please. Thank you so much for God and my country. I speak these words and I wish you the best. And I, I pray that one day, like Jesus rose from the dead and delivered us from sin, that this country may be redeemed and delivered once again. Thank you very much. <laughs>